Well, Democrats are celebrating significant election victories in Kentucky and Virginia. State Attorney General Andy Bashir is claiming victory in Kentucky's governor's race. He faced Republican Governor Matt Bevin. That race is still officially too close to call, but Bashir leads by about 5,000 votes. Democrats also took control of Virginia legislature yesterday for the first time in more than two decades. Natalie Brand has more on the election results. Democrat Andy Bashir held a news conference Wednesday about his plans for Kentucky after claiming victory in the state's governor's race. It's time to come together and to get to work. Bashir leads incumbent Republican Governor Matt Bevin by 5,000 votes. The race is still officially too close to call and Bevin isn't ready to throw in the towel. We are not conceding this race by any stretch. President Trump, who won Kentucky by 30 points in 2016, traveled there on election eve to help Bevin, whose policies were unpopular in the state. If you lose, they're going to say Trump suffered the greatest defeat in the history of the world. This was the greatest. You can't let that happen to me. Republicans did win every other statewide race in Kentucky, including Daniel Cameron, who becomes the state's first African-American attorney general. President Trump pointed to those victories in a tweet Wednesday, saying based on the Kentucky results, Mitch McConnell will win big in Kentucky next year. But the governor's race in Kentucky and state legislative races in Virginia point to President Trump's vulnerabilities with suburban voters. In Virginia, Democrats took full control of the state government for the first time in nearly 25 years. Democratic Party Chairman Tom Perez says the party's message of unity is resonating in the suburbs. Prince William County embodies the challenges that Donald Trump and his politics of division are confronting in today's world. It is the quintessential suburb. The president is not done campaigning. He heads to Louisiana tonight ahead of the November 16 runoff election in that state's governor's race. Natalie Brandt, CBS News, the White House. For more on Kentucky and Virginia, I want to bring in Larry Sabato. He's the director of the University of Virginia Center for Politics. So, Larry, I want to start with where you're at, Virginia. How significant was this for Democrats that now they control the state legislature for the first time in more than two decades? Very significant. In fact, there has never been a center-left coalition running Virginia fully until now. Uh, this was the last piece of the puzzle for Democrats. Virginia used to be a heavily Republican state. Now they have both houses of the legislature, the governor, lieutenant governor, attorney general, a majority of the U.S. House delegation, both U.S. senators. They have no more worlds to conquer, I don't think. So you say they have no more worlds, worlds to conquer at this point. Can we say it's no longer a purple state, that this is definitely a blue state? It is for right now. Uh, and I think as long as Trump is on the ballot, it will be a blue state. Now, in the post-Trump period, it's up to Republicans to decide what they do. If they moderate and move away from some of the Trump positions, uh, Virginia could become competitive again, but not for the foreseeable future. When we look at Kentucky, you see Democrat Bashir declaring victory, a very close race uh, with the Republican candidate there, Bevin. Why did this race gain such national attention, Larry? Because Matt Bevin is a kind of genetic duplicate of Donald Trump. That's really why. You have someone who ought to be elected or reelected to his position, given the very Republican nature of Kentucky. And yet it's his personality, it's, it's, to be blunt, his offensiveness, the meanness with which he has governed on occasion that turned off so many people who would otherwise have voted for him or even turned out to vote. Some of the voter turnouts were down in Republican areas. You actually said that Bevin tried to lose. What do you mean by that? Well, I, he tried to lose in that politicians who really want to win learn that it, it always makes more sense uh, to uh, put out some honey than vinegar. You're going to attract more flies with honey than vinegar. Well, Trump has not learned that, and Bevin hasn't learned it. And Bevin really did offend a lot of people in interest groups like the school teachers, many of whom would have voted for him. They're conservative, they're evangelical Christian, whatever the case may be. Uh, but after a while, you get so sick of someone, even if you agree with that person, you won't turn out to vote. You know, when you look at some other areas, Mississippi, for instance, I'm looking in one county there, the Memphis suburbs there, where the GOP margin, DeSoto County, people are pointing to that. It dropped from 61 points 
to 20 points there. What are we reading? What do you read when you look out for Republicans on the suburbs in, in American counties? What are you saying? Are we seeing some sort of a trend here? Absolutely. It's a trend that actually started uh, almost as soon as Trump took office in 2017, and it has continued to yesterday, and it shows no sign of abating before the presidential elections. And that trend is this. College-educated whites, not just minorities, whites, have been turned off to Donald Trump's methods. And as a result, they're embarrassed by him. They don't want to be associated with him. They've been Republican all their lives. They've mainly voted for Republican presidential candidates, but they started to shift and they're voting for Democrats at lower levels too. This is a big problem for Republicans. Uh, flares are going off. People should see these flares uh, continent away. Do you get the sense that the Republican Party is concerned? Leaders in, in the upper echelons of the party, are they worried? The uh, upper echelon leaders are very worried. And of course, they won't express it because they don't want a nasty tweet from Donald Trump. But of course they know what's going on and they wish that he would stop. They wish that he would become a different person. And they also recognize that's all impossible. So Larry, when you look to 2020, Pennsylvania, Michigan, Arizona, what is last night's races mean for the president and for Democrats as well in these particular states? I think both parties have to focus on uh, the suburbs and exurbs, that is the newer suburbs. That's where the election's going to be decided. We already know rural areas are gonna have high turnouts and they're gonna be very pro-Trump. We already know the central cities are gonna be very blue, very pro-democratic nominee. This election's gonna be decided by the margins in the suburbs, the margins in the exurbs, what's the turnout like, and how much do they defect from the Republican Party, the, the Republican Party they've been supporting for decades. Larry Sabato, I wanna thank you very much, Larry, for joining us. Thank you, Rena.